We'll be focusing on uh, large block sizes and uh, the intersection here, even though I know Chinner indicated there's no intersection, clearly there's a, uh, some sort of intersection here with uh, atomic. So um, in talking about this in, pre in preparation for this, uh, John had asked to do a recap. My interest was, however, to focus more about the possible intersection between large block sizes and supporting atomics. Uh, so let me go ahead and just do a quick recap on that. Uh, large block sizes, um, as Matthew indicated, uh, essentially takes advantage of support for uh, large folios. Um, and the real challenge that we had to face was essentially dealing with alignment requirements in the page cache. That was made easy by how the page cache was modified to use uh, X-Array and supporting multi-index. Um, it may be difficult to kind of wrap your head around how this is even possible. So um, my recommendation for folks to try to get a grasp of this is to simply look at the self-test for X-Array. There is a simple wrapper that it basically tells you, just look for a page cache in that self-test and it basically tells you what the simplified version of, if you wanted to implement a very simple page cache using multi-index, what that would look like. So I recommend for you to review that instead of looking at the page cache first. Once you review the self-test and under, understand how the self-test works with multi-index support, look at and focus on how you're adding entries into XRA and also removing them. That's really all you need to do to start helping get a good grasp of how it is that we're essentially moving towards supporting large block sizes um, in the page cache. So one of the things that came up um, was um, this new API for supporting atomics. And one of the intersections uh, that both problems face is essentially a way to dealing with proper alignment. Um, and that's very unique. Um, essentially, hardware that is supporting large atomics has a alignment requirement also, and that varies by block device. So I can at least tell you at least what, what, how this would work with NVMe, but the same thing happens with SCSI as well. I'm sure it'll likely happen with other uh, uh, block devices. But for NVMe, there's a particular field that requires you to align also to a specific boundary for the right atomic. If you don't respect that atomic, then you have no guarantees that the atomic is going to work. So yes, you can work with large folios and try to write, um, but if you don't have the alignment set, it just won't work. Um, so that's essentially where there is an intersection. I understand, Chenry, you had a point that there's no overlap here, but my point here is just that the intersection is on the addressing the problem of alignment. Um, and that the you know X-ray and supporting large folios and LPS is already doing this for us. Um, so then it dawned on me on trying to look over of how it is that we can support buffered I/O for um, uh, large atomics as well, and because that was not being addressed yet, and um, it occurred to me that likely it might be possible and much simpler to support that if we already take advantage of the alignment requirements with large block sizes. Given that you're already aligning your blocks to, let's say, a boundary for the atomics, then you already have that taken care of for you. So the next problems are really the crux of this is what else is left. Uh, but for that, I hope that we can address that in the next session. So what I'd like to do, though, is to first address some of the remaining components that are left to discuss for LBS. As I, as I said before, I, I really didn't intend to talk about just LBS alone because I think, really frankly, I consider that more like a done deal. What I'm hoping for is to try to address the next aspects that we should be talking about. For the next session, I hope that we can focus on buffered I.O. Um, I'm trying to be, be fast here so that way I can give as much time as possible for John to review atomics 
And so that way we can hash out what it is that we need to talk about for atomics as well. Um, and then dedicate the next session for the harder problem, which is buffered IO. So, and so far as LBS is concerned, uh, I get, I'd like to get a sense for um, interest in other file systems in supporting uh, large block sizes. Obviously, a requirement will be for you to support large folios. Uh, the next obvious target uh, would be, for instance, BcacheFS and ERFS. Uh, Kent, I think you're here? here? Or was? Used to be here. Uh, and then ERFS large, supports large. Uh, Matthew, you had uh, one aspect for ERFS that was um, yellow. Um, can you elaborate on that? Uh, I've, I've, I've got to admit to having done that slide quite late at night. Um, e e ERFS is, is, is like mostly done, but there's still a few places left that use struct page. I believe, and this is based on a quick scan of ERFS, so if somebody knows ERFS, please come up here instead of me. Um, ERFS currently uses struct page as part of its decompression. So if, if, if you um, if it is attempting to decompress and it can't decompress directly into the page cache because there is already some stuff present that would need to be overwritten by doing the decompression step, that it allocates pages does the for, for the parts that would overlap with the page cache, decompresses into those and then throws them away after the decompression is complete. So I, I believe for your purposes, ERFS is done. I see. But not f like completely done. I see, I see, okay, great. So then that could be a next target as well. Uh, but as Matthew indicated, a lot of this does also require testing. And if you don't have file system developers involved in reviewing some of these things, you won't be able to succeed. The reason is that, as we've discovered, a lot of effort has also been put into actually fixing bugs in FS tests that assumed that you were working in specific block sizes. And the other interesting thing that we have found out is that a lot of these bugs were already there for large page sizes as well. So essentially, we had test bugs, and we just didn't realize it or didn't have enough time to look into them. So fortunately, a lot of that is being fixed now, which will pave the way for when it is that we want to test other file systems with larger block sizes as well. But some file systems, however, may have their own tests, of course, which may have their own test bugs. So we should already expect that. Don't be surprised about that. Um, so let's see, any, any other file systems that are interested in looking into large folios and then working and supporting uh, uh, large block sizes, other than the ones that I just mentioned? Damien? ZoneFS. So when you say that you're interested in that, are you interested in also helping to, you know, do the work and you know, test the file system? Do you have uh, file system tests and FS tests, you know? Because I can certainly help wrap up. Say that again? Not FS tests. Not FS tests. So there's no FS test for ZoneFS. Yeah, if you can go to the mic, that'd be very useful. So I just wanted to say that um, ZoneFS already uses IO map, and so there is almost certainly very little work left to do. It's simply a case of inserting the calls to say, hey, I, I want to use uh, large folios, and then testing it. Um, because IO map really does take care of almost everything for you. It's just that it hasn't been tested, so I didn't enable it. Yes, um, so ZoneFS is a bit special, so FS doesn't work with it. Um, but I'm interested in large blocks. Um, again, it's a simple file system, so it should be fairly trivial to to support that uh, after adding large folio, which also should be very simple. Uh, it's been on my to-do list forever, and yeah, no time, so I haven't done it yet. Johannes almost finished it right now, so. Um, Johannes what? Say. Almost finished the large folio support now. For, for ZoneFS? Yeah. Oh, oh, cool. In 10 minutes, he's submitting pitches, yeah? Yeah, uh, we, we are just going to run some tests and submit. <laughs> oh, wow. That's great news. Thanks. So, so it's like being tested now and almost... You're running tests or not? <laughs> okay, but 
So, so you are speaking here mostly about the data path, yeah? So, so IOMAP solves for you the data path, but it doesn't really solve anything about the metadata. Yeah, that's correct. That, that, so I was hoping that we might have a session dedicated towards that. So it doesn't seem like we might, so maybe we need to address that in the file system specific buff, because I wanted to try to, I, I, I agree that that's a complete separate topic, but we do need attention to that. Um, yeah, because the data path is of course yes. nice and it's like performance improvement, but yes. like if we speak about large block size support, then metadata is actually yeah. the harder part. <laughs> for, for that, we just need a target file system and interested developers, because that is a hard, challenging problem. So my question is, do we have uh, file system developers that are really interested in working on that? Because if we don't have that, it's, not, it's, it's basically just a zero-sum game. We, we just can't win, you know, at all. Yeah, so actually ButterFS is backwards, so we only support larger block sizes with metadata, not with data. <laughs> so we, we, like our default now is 16K metadata block sizes. Um, can, can you say that again? So ButterFS's default is 16K metadata block sizes. The only reason we haven't done data yet is we're still doing the IOMAP convert. We're doing the IOMAP conversion, and then once that's done, we're just going to hope turn it on and pray. So large folios? Yeah. So like large folios is next. Well, we're going to do IOMAP, which should come this year, hopefully, and then large folio be enabled, and then we support both meta. Then at that point, we'll support both metadata and data path for large block sizes. So essentially, the metadata would also benefit from this completely. Then, um, I mean, yeah. basically, because you already have 16k on the metadata side of things. Yeah, we'll go up to. We can go up to 64k. You can. Obviously, it's just an artificial limit. You can go up to 64K. We default to 16K. So you, you can customize this at MK yeah, plus yeah. time. Yeah, you can go, you can go sub block size, or you can sub page size all the way up to 64K. This is going to be really important also for atomics too, right? Because with the atomics, you essentially get the complete atomicity requirement for that sector size too. Great, thank you. And one question since, since, since you addressed ButterFS, uh, it, does ButterFS support today or in the near time future uh, larger block sizes uh, when the page size is, is larger too? Yeah, so like the, on, we had this problem before where like ARM with their 64K page sizes and power, and power as well. Like anything that's like the page size is bigger, you just automatically get the bigger. Is, is this new or has this already been there? That's always been the case. We actually had to go back and add subpage support because distros complained about um, wanting to move USB sticks between ARM and x86. So for the for we actually prefer larger block sizes. And like I said, we we've, we've had it in metadata since day one. So great. So so then it's, it's essentially it sounds like from the ButterFS perspective, there's a a desire to want to get there anyway because of the metadata. And how about on the on the data side of a data data path? Is there interest to cross that bridge as well too from developer side to support larger block sizes too? Yeah, yeah. Like it's purely just the we're doing the IOMAP conversion. Like the direct path is already IOMAP. The buffer side has been trickier. I've reworked a lot of the locking to hopefully unblock that work. So hopefully it goes faster than it has been. Um, and once the IOMAP stuff is done, we're just going to like turn on huge page support and see what breaks and fix it. And then from there, like you can do whatever you want with the block size because it's configurable. Great, thank you. So uh, one of the things that we should then do is schedule time to make sure we talk about that uh, metadata aspect for, especially for buffer heads, right, too, if we want to cross that world. I'm not sure we have any session yet to cover that, but if we're not addressing that in any of the buffs for file systems, we need time to certainly talk about that. I, I don't know what it would take for buffer heads. I know we do the same thing that XFS does. So you guys have your own cache, you know, API to... Yeah, for metadata. and. Dave, I assume you guys can do this. Sure. Sorry, can you? Can yeah, the buffer cache that XFS lift the buffer cache from XFS to allow allow other file systems. Now, is is anyone working on a file system in, interested in doing that? Because, like. Yeah, but but what file system would 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 could leverage that. Yeah, I mean, we could. Like, the, I'm honestly, a lot of. 
So, I mean, the obvious target would be ext4, right? So, uh, is that... Can, can you, uh, sorry, can throw, someone th pass a mic or... <laughs> to, it's just easier. Is this thing on? Um, yeah, so Willie talked about uh, XT4 using buffer heads in a special manner for, for folios. Yeah. Yeah, for just the journal. Um, XFS has its own buffer cache and its own essentially buffer heads, which have always been supporting up to 64K block sizes. Uh, you know, regardless of the file system block size. So we've done that, you know, within XFS since, well, 1995. Um, so before it was even ported to, to, to Linux. Um, with the metadata, it's got its own, essentially its own structure and everything like that. We could just simply replace what buffer heads refer to with the XFS uh, buffer head object essentially, and that gives all the same information, all the mapping, everything like that. Um, so we could actually lift that up out of XFS and make it, you know, generic. It's all basically generic. There's nothing particularly XFS specific about it at all. It's just a wrapper around a page allocator and also the slab allocator. So it already supports using slab allocation for sub-page size buffers. Um, and it supports uh, things called compound buffers, which are a buffer that is made up of multiple discontinuous blocks that we treat as a single contiguous structure in memory. So it's got vmalloc backing and all sorts of things like that um, that allow it to essentially take something that is designed for a contiguous 4K block and just map it straight up to 64K and it's still, a, in memory, a contiguous block. So you don't need to change any of the actual file system code for structures that cross page boundaries or anything of the sort like that. Um, so it's actually quite, you know, simple to, to just say this is a 4K block, this is a 64K block, this is a 16K block, this is a 512 byte sector. Um, it's all the same code and nothing changes in the actual application itself. Great. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic news. So uh, I'm kind of here just to say, like, as the guy who basically forcibly switched ButterFS's default to 4K because said problems with dealing with interoperability, um, I would generally, I'm, I'm appreciative of the, guy, the work you guys are doing with folios, is particularly supporting large folios and getting what I've been terming super page or super block uh, uh, support for us because, I mean, it's not just ButterFS where I've encountered this being downstream in Fedora Asahi Remix. Um, F2FS basically corrupts file systems on mount because of this. Um, and there's a couple of other file systems that um, they will either fail to mount, which is the good case, or they will overwrite in incompatible chunk sizes and break the file system entirely, which is sadly way more common than I want it to be. Um, so I, I'm just going to say, please do it as, it, you know, whatever you guys can do to make this less horrible for all of us dealing with different architectures with mixed page sizes and all the other fun nastiness. You know, I appreciate that you're working on it. Oh, I know, but uh, it, blame Joseph. They were calling it sub page before, so I came up with super page to be the other way around. And this is why we end up with folio instead of with super page. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, uh, thanks, Dave, for uh, one of the method of XFS buff lifting. So I think uh, in IOMAP session, what I also intend to discuss is there are a couple of, uh, couple of methods being floating around. One, I think, is something that Ted and Matthew has suggested uh, of kind of doing buffer head surgery uh, and then making sure that maybe, you know, we can rip off all unnecessary data from buffer heads and maybe uh, use that as a maybe FS buff sort of a implementation. And then XFS buff is also something that Derek and Dave has obviously suggested. Uh, but other than that, I also wanted to kind of ask you a question on large block sizes, uh, which is that uh, apart from the portability that it offers, obviously for large page size system, it is quite helpful, so thank you. So you can actually now move your file system across even on a 4K page, 
4K page size system. But other than that, uh, what uh, you know benefit it really brings, and if you make a file system as a large block size, won't it affect kind of a write amplification problem that you would see? So, I mean, so. That, that's getting into the weeds of, of how it fits into hardware, and I think that I'd prefer to leave that um, separately because it deals with the hardware. Um, and I think it does, you know, I, I'd rather focus first more on the software side of things. On the software side of things, I did have a big question on whether or not um, it would uh, help with file fragmentation. Um, I think uh, large folios, at least, in theory, should help with file fragmentation, but we have enough experts here with file systems that they should give us their opinion on, on what the outcome likely might be for file fragmentation, which is more software specific than file specific. And you're next to someone who can answer that. Well, okay. I can answer that. I hate discontinued buffers in XFS. They're a pain. They're really hard to test. They cause all kinds of weird bugs in F to show up, shake out of FS tests. So my advice to everybody is try not to do that. You don't really want to have a megabyte directory block that's split among thousands and thousands of blocks anyway, right? Yes. <laughs> that's a maybe solvable problem. We could just deprecate it. Um, let's see. So as far as building a buffer cache, I already built one. It's buried in the FS Verity patch set for XFS, which is stuck in the three-mile-long freight train of everything that's in my development tree that's blocking traffic all over the city. And I'm trying to figure out how a good way to staple it onto JBD2 so that we could port ext4 to it. And that's hard because then you have to port OCFS2. So maybe we should just deprecate OCFS2 also. Is there anybody here who actually uses it? So, so can you elaborate a bit more on that? Because I, I, I didn't hear correctly. You said that, that there's some patches that you have out of tree or something like that. Uh, is, is that right? Yeah, Andre at Red Hat posted a patch set to try to implement FS Verity for XFS using a kind of strange way to cache the Merkle tree blocks. I decided that I didn't really like that, but I thought, okay, well, that means I get to go write a buffer cache. So I made a thin wrapper around our hash table so that you can have indexed U64 lookups of arbitrary blobs of memory, which is more or less a buffer cache. It kind of resembles the XFS buffer cache, but without all the XFS log manager stuff in it, because that will just complicate things. And I don't think we want to port the, all the other file systems to use the XFS log. <laughs> so at the moment, it's mostly just a, we can, you can pass fully allocated buffers to it and find out if you've lost a race to stuff a buffer in, and then after that, you can just do regular buffer lookups, do stuff with them, and then persist them somehow. For FS Verity, you don't have to write the Merkle tree blocks after you've written the initial tree, so I haven't really gotten to that part yet. But that is where I left off in trying to figure out how to couple this to JBD2, because hopefully writing blocks for non-journaled file systems is a simpler corner case of that. Oh, and to address Neil's comment, you actually got it backwards. The file systems that corrupt and drivers that corrupt and destroy everything, that's the good case because then people stop using that file system and then we can deprecate it and remove it. I wish that would happen. <laughs> All right, enough trolling comments. Thanks. Hannes? So, um, well, at the end of the day, we still have to read data at one point. And um, that is where Bufferheads comes in because it's primarily used before you're even able to set up IOMAP because you're setting up IOMA based on the data you just read from the DIT, a disk, which consequently means you have to have a way to read data from disk. Sure, you can code it all by hand, which is what file systems do, which do not use buffer hats, but those who don't, they, st they use buffer to, uh, to read data from disk, and there's no way around. So we can surely update things to whatever, use lift off things from XFS, but in the end we have to have a mechanism to read data from disk, and that's what uh, Bufferhat does. Um, unless we use the um, IOMAP you know, I all map can't the, read the data from disk. Not for the super block. Uh, we, you, we, you have to set up the I/O map to get the data correctly. Then you can, but you have to set it up by data which you get from disk, namely reading the super block. I map doesn't help. No, you this. you 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 basically use the block device cache uh, wrapper, 
the AOPS for a block device cache, just as you would when you enable just yes. config with and disable then config you buffer back to, to whatever the block device does, which is using the buffer, can, buffer hat. No, no, it doesn't use it at all. In no way, shape, or form. Who doesn't use it? The block device. No, we, 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 we don't use buffer heads at all with, in the world of no config buffer head. Right. Yes, but you're still, okay. But this is only if you switch off buffer heads. I mean, if you just switched off all devices, all files well, which use buffer heads. I, 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 we certainly should talk about that. Um, but yeah, I, l let's talk about that in a session. I think we should dedicate some uh, attention to the block device cache for sure. Yeah, so will we have a session for that? Question mark. Uh, let's have a boff then, because I don't think we, we have it scheduled, but I, I think we should talk about that then. Amir? I don't know, we didn't really reach a conclusion of which session we should do, yeah, so. um, but there are slots and we can decide. Um, so, yeah, if that's, a dedicated that's, session for Bufferhead is needed, we can find the slot. Yeah, I mean, I, or rather for... Um, them, do you want to lead it? Yeah, right. okay. yeah, yeah, sure. I wasn't sure. I, didn't I mean, an really, I, I think it'd be great if we can get Christoph to agree to that and would love to get Chenner's opinion on that too. I, I would think that you have something to say about that, but... Okay, so... Um, yeah, I'll try to schedule something. Right. Um, so I'd like to now, I mean, it seems like I, didn't, I wasn't expecting to talk about all this stuff, but... Um, well, the, for, the, for the... By the schedule, we have coffee break, but you don't, we don't need to take it right now. And after that, we have the talk from uh, John and Ted. So... You want yeah, to take I, a break now and continue. Yeah, let's let, let's let's uh, let's. Uh, I'll just address uh, James a question. I think that that's a hardware question, and I'm happy to talk about that. But I, I'd like to separate hardware from software, and um, I wanted to yield as much time as possible. It was not possible to yield any time to John for the atomics aspect, but hopefully it's clear at least uh, that the the LBS infrastructure helps pave the way for making it easier to support alignment to the atomic requirements for the, for, for, um, uh, the atomic boundary requirements for atomics. So hopefully we'll, we'll hear, hear more about that in the next session and also cover buffer I.O. Thank you.